welcome back. A little over a month ago, a member of my Discord, Brandon, sent me a message and he said, hey, listen, I've got a hold of this really cool, unique uh, US military thing. It's got some very cool vacuum tubes in it, but I don't have a clue what it does. Uh, would you mind taking a look at it and maybe you can figure something out? And so he sent me some pictures of it and I said, I don't have a clue either. <laughs> But I would love to dive in and try to make a schematic based on uh, the, the routing of all the wires inside. And so if he didn't mind, I would like you to send it to me. And so he did. He packaged it up. He put it in a box. He sent it. And I've been pouring over this thing for the last few weeks trying to figure out what is going on. Uh, and, well, that piece, you probably have spotted it in a couple of previous episodes. It's this thing sitting right here next to me. This is it. This is all I received. It's just this uh, gray box with no indication of what it does anywhere on it. It has a little tag here that says accepted by Navy, placed in service, and you're supposed to put some dates on there, I guess, but uh, there's no dates. And then it just says, uh, see instruction book regarding guarantee. And <laughs> that's it. It looks like somebody stole a plug off of the back, but other than that, uh, I have no clue what this thing does, uh, but I think I've got a schematic mostly laid out for what's going on inside of it. So let's hop over to the bench. We'll take it out of its gray case here, take a look at what's going on inside, then we'll take a look at the schematic, and I think I might be able to put some power into it, and maybe we can see the little magic eye here on the front give us some nice green glow. So let's hop over to the bench and get started. And here it is. Uh, what we have are two fuses on the bottom with an on off switch. Then we have a gain knob that goes from zero to 10. Uh, it unfortunately doesn't go to 11. The numbers all go to 11. Uh, then above that it says set gain to close indicator shadow to a fine line with equipment trained and tuned for maximum. Uh, and then the indicator that it's talking about is the uh, little magic eye tube that's right above it. And that's it. Other than that, there is no indication of what is going on at all, or even what this equipment trained and tuned for maximum even means. And near as I can tell, as we'll see in the schematic later, there is no output coming out of this thing. There's only input coming into it. So I have absolutely no idea what this thing is supposed to do. But we can get into it pretty easily by just unscrewing these four little knobs here and sliding it out. So let's go ahead and do that so we can get a look at the inside. With the four of them unscrewed, kind of like all of my old HP equipment, it just slides right out the front. And now that we have the case off of it, we can get a much better look at what's going on inside. Up at the top here, we have our magic eye tube, and this is a 1629 magic eye. And then below that, we have a 12J5 GT. This is a glass tube, and it's actually supposed to be a glass tube. They actually mark 12J5 GT on the chassis here. Uh, which seems a little weird to me because the two other tubes in this thing are actually metal tubes. Uh, we can see that the tube right next to it is a 12SQ7, and then the tube on the back at the top here is a 12H6. Now the 12H6 is a dual diode, the 12SQ7 is a triode dual diode combo, and then the 12J5GT is a single triode. And then we have some large capacitors hanging about. We've got one here, we've got two boxes here, and there's another box right in the back over here. These are all uh, pretty high voltage capacitors. I think they're all rated at 600 volts. Uh, it's kind of an overkill rating because near as I can tell, this thing runs on rectified 120 volts. So it's only gonna have at most 180 volts anywhere on the circuit. But uh, as we'll see is a common theme with this thing, it is incredible incredibly over-engineered. All of the wiring has this uh, beautiful wire wrapping on it, and then everything in here is coated with a conformal coating. Now on the back here, we have this really wild looking component, uh, but it turns out this is just an incredibly high wattage 500 ohm resistor. And this actually sits in the heater circuit for the heaters for the four tubes. 
Now there are uh, quite a few passive components going on. They're on these turret boards. You can see that there's one turret board uh, right up here. And then there's another turret board that's a lot easier to see right down here on the bottom. And then everything is, of course, wired up with point-to-point -point wiring. Looking at the other side here, you can uh, get a really good look at the beautiful job that they did routing the harness. It's just very cleanly routed. Unfortunately, all the wires look to be pretty much the same color. So the only way to uh, <laughs> reverse engineer this and figure out what goes where was to just test each of the points manually, which was uh, pretty laborious. Uh, we can see that there has been something cut off here these wires look uh, kind of frayed and gross and these are actually the power wires near as I can tell um, so they're gonna go to the plug that is missing right through here uh, so if I'm gonna power this up I'm gonna have to strip these back and uh, maybe solder some uh, leads to it so that I can put some power into this. Now, as I said, I uh, have been spending a couple of weeks uh, trying to figure out the uh, schematic for this, and I think I've got it. I'm like 90% sure that I've got the correct schematic laid out. So let's pull the schematic out and take a look at it. All right, so here's my uh, best shot at making a schematic for everything that's going on inside of here. So we'll start with uh, connector J1. This is the connector that's missing. And uh, near as I can tell, this is only using two pins of the connector, but the two wires that have been cut actually go to our switch and then we have two fuses after that and then on the other side of the fuses the power splits and goes in two directions the first is to power all of the filaments and you can see that we come out of f2 here and we go through the filaments for the 12 bh6 then the filament for the 12 j5 then the filament for the 12 sq7 and finally to the filament for the 1629 then we loop back and we go through that massive uh, high <laughs> wattage 500 ohm resistor. Uh, now the reason that I am like 90% certain that this runs on 120 volt AC is because the filaments for each of the tubes are 12 volt 150 milliamp filaments and if you put the four of them in series and then add in the 500 ohm resistor the only way to get a 12 volt drop across each tube is if you have 120 volts going through it. Now the other direction that that 120 volts goes is into our 12H6 here, which is a dual diode. Uh, and this is rectifying that AC into DC to be used for the rest of the system. Now looking at diodes in this way can uh, often be confusing and it's really hard for me to wrap my head around how exactly the rectification is working and how that's supplying uh, you know, the B plus and the B minus rail for the rest of the system. Uh, so I thought it would make it a lot easier to understand if I redrew uh, the schematic here without the filaments and changed all of the diodes to a standard diode symbol, you know, the little arrow with the line on it. Uh, and this becomes particularly helpful when we get to the 12SQ7 over here, which has uh, two diodes stuffed inside of the tube. And so this is my simplified schematic that has replaced all of the diodes. You'll notice that there is no 12H6 in this schematic, and that's because these two diodes over here on the far left are the equivalent of the 12H6. Now, if you have a center tapped transformer, you can use a dual diode tube to give a full bridge rectification. But I don't think that we have a center tapped transformer in use here because of the way that the diodes are set up with relation to the power wires that are coming in. We just have uh, one diode going this way and one diode coming back. So this is just going to give half wave rectification. And I'm not entirely sure why they chose to go with a dual diode in this situation. The only thing I can think of is a redundancy thing because this thing is well over engineered for military use. So uh, the 12H6 has separate cathodes and separate plates for each of the diodes. So if one of the diodes develops a short, the other diode is still providing rectification. Uh, and then we have a two microfarad capacitor that goes between B plus and B minus to uh, hopefully smooth out that AC that's being rectified. J2, the connector that's actually still in place, uh, has three pins on it, but two of those pins just go to ground, and then the middle pin goes to our two nanofarad capacitor here, which is just a coupling capacitor. And then coming out of that coupling capacitor, we go to the 10,000 ohm potentiometer. This is our gain potentiometer that's on the front of the unit. Uh, and a lot of people pointed out in my Atari Punk console uh, video that I should have set up the volume potentiometer in this way instead of the way that I did it, and you guys were absolutely 
absolutely right. I just totally blanked on it. <laughs> um, this is the proper way to set up a gain potentiometer. Coming out of the gain potentiometer, we go into the grid of the 12J5 here. That has a 22,000 ohm plate resistor and a 3.3,000 ohm uh, cathode resistor. This is just amplifying the signal that's coming in from J2 here. The output of that coming off of the plate goes through another 2 nanofarad capacitor and goes into the grid of the 12SQ7. We have a 1 mega ohm grid leakage resistor, uh, and then we have a 22,000 ohm plate resistor, and the cathode is connected directly to the B- rail. This is yet another amplification stage, and then coming off the plate of the 12SQ7, we go through one more 2 nanofarad capacitor, and then this is the part that I'm not too sure of. The two diodes are very much so in parallel. If we look at the layout for the 12SQ7, uh, we can see that inside the tube there are two plates that act as the plates for our two diodes, and these plates have a shared cathode. That cathode is also shared with the triode, and that cathode is directly connected to B-. And then on the actual unit itself, the uh, plates for the diodes are pins 4 and 5, and there's just a short little wire connected directly across the two of those. Now here's where I get even more confused, because I don't know a whole lot about magic eye tubes. Uh, the grid and the cathode look to be connected to the output from the 12SQ7 through 1 mega ohm resistors, but there's also a 500 nanofarad capacitor between the two. I'm not entirely sure what this is going to do. This seems like a really strange arrangement to me. And if we look at the data sheet for the 1629 Magic Eye Tube, we can see that they say that the uh, grid should never go positive. And so I think that's what the diodes are doing here. The 2 nanofarad capacitor is going to be an AC coupling capacitor, and that AC signal is going to go both positive and negative. And we don't want that positive to go into the grid, so we've got these uh, diodes here that shunt it to ground when it's going positive. Now, as I said, everything else in here I'm fairly confident on. It's just this uh, magic eye tube, the way that it's set up with these two 1 megs and this 500 nanofarad, that are uh, adding a little bit of doubt to my schematic here. Um, but if anybody out there is more familiar with magic eye tubes and this looks like a fairly normal setup, definitely let me know. Or uh, more importantly, I guess, if it looks like it's totally wrong, let me know. There's a little bit of rework it looks like was done on the back of the magic eye tube. So it's possible that somebody was doing some rework in here and wired something up incorrectly. Uh, but I'm going to work on the assumption that everything is wired up correctly, which means that I think I'm going to try and put some power into this. Uh, but in order to do that, I have to strip back the two wires that go to the missing connector J1 and uh, solder some leads coming off of those so that I can hook it up to some power. Uh, so let's uh, strip those back and then we'll try to put some power into this and see what happens. All right, I think we're ready to go ahead and power this thing up for the first time. I went ahead and put a, a little plug that I just had hanging around in the garage in the back and solder the wires up to the original wires. Uh, so I should be able to uh, unplug this and set it on the shelf uh, without having to deal with wires hanging out of the back. Now, I am crazy, but I'm not crazy enough to just plug this thing straight into the wall. Um, I also don't have an isolation transformer, but I do happen to have a transformer. This came out of a Tektronix uh, 545 scope, I believe. Um, it is massive, weighs a ton, but there are two taps on it that produce 113 volts AC at 500 milliamps, which is perfect for powering this thing up. Now, unfortunately, I don't have a Variac, so I can't uh, slowly crank it up. Uh, so we're just going to have to go full send, and uh, hopefully we don't let any of the magic smoke out. And, well, I think I've been delaying long enough, so let's go ahead and flip the power on. And nothing happened yet because the main power switch is off. So I'll go ahead and flip that on. And we're warming up, hopefully. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yes. We, we are warming up. <laughs> I genuinely haven't tried this before now, but I can see that the magic eye tube is glowing ever so slightly. Let me... Uh, rotate that around there so you guys can see that a little better look at that the magic eye tube is is on it's glowing that means that the filaments in all four tubes 
are warming up and working correctly. Uh, because if any one of the tubes were bad, that would break the series heater chain and nothing would warm up at all. But because we're getting a nice green glow out of that, that means that, <laughs> that all four tubes are good. Uh, and I don't see any magic smoke flying out from anywhere. It all looks to be warming up correctly. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, I've got my uh, HP 200 CD wide range oscillator here putting out about a two volt peak to peak uh, signal and it's set at 10 kilohertz. That's going into the input through the uh, plug on the back that was still there, although I just skipped around the plug and went straight to the coupling capacitor. Uh, this we know is warming up and somewhat working, so we'll go ahead and uh, flip it on here. The gain is turned all the way down, so we should see the magic eye tube here uh, warm up and the indicator shadow, which is going to be the open spot on the bottom, should look exactly like it did before. Yeah, I can see the uh, beautiful green glow coming in. Oh man, that just looks so cool. And uh, yeah, I can see that the indicator shadow is totally open. Uh, now with the two volt peak to peak signal coming in, we should be able to turn the gain up and get that indicator shadow to close. And they say to uh, close it to a fine line. So let's see if the gain switch does anything. Oh yeah, look at that. Uh, two volts peak to peak may be a little much. There we go. That's pretty much a fine line right there, and I'm only at about four on the gain there. Um, so I could probably bring the uh, HP oscillator down a bit, but check that out. We have proper gain control with our uh, little gain knob here. The Magic Eye is working beautifully. God, it looks so good. Magic Eyes are just such beautiful tubes. That thing is so cool. Well, there we go. It's uh, it's working perfectly. I'm honestly not that surprised because it is so incredibly over-engineered inside. This thing was very clearly designed to live in extremely harsh conditions, but it, it's, it's working perfectly even after 60 years or so. That's so cool. Uh, I, don't, I, I don't know what it does though. I have no clue what you would use this for. Obviously it's part of a much larger system, but with no output coming out of it, just an indicator here, I don't know what <laughs> you can use it for. So if anybody knows, please leave a comment down below. I, I'm really curious what this is supposed to be used for. But based upon the schematic that we reverse engineered, it's operating exactly as expected. Uh, I just don't know what the end goal is, but it works. It really works. How cool is that? <laughs> that is awesome. Uh, so thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next episode.